Uh, right, okay. So, um, why is this reaction not feasible at high temperature? I would uh, always go back to Gibbs free energy for this one. Delta H we know is negative. Minus T delta S is positive because delta S is negative. Therefore, this minus T delta S becomes more positive at high temperature. Obviously, this term is going to get bigger as temperature gets bigger. Um, eventually, more positive than delta H is negative, and therefore, eventually, delta G becomes greater than zero, and it's no longer feasible. Uh, right. Uh, why is the temperature of 400 to 500 degrees C generally used? Um, despite it being feasible at room temperature, it's because the rate is probably incredibly slow. Well, it is incredibly slow at uh, room temperature. So the rate too slow, uh, the activation energy is too high. Okay, transition metal time. First of all, electronic configuration of chromium. Remember, chromium is one of the uh, strange ones. Uh, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5, 4s1. Uh, remember, he's happier with two half build subshells. Chromium 3 plus, um, I am going to lose three electrons. Remember, they go from the 4s first, so it's going to end up. 3D, I've lost one from there, two from there, 3D3. Obviously, you put all of those in, I'm just too lazy. Uh, right, acidified solution, reacts with zinc, unbalanced half equation shown below, balance these and construct equation. Right, zinc to zinc 2 plus, I'm obviously going to need two electrons there to balance out the charge. Uh, let's have a look here. First of all, I've got to have two chromiums there, haven't I? So I've got two chromiums there. Chromium there is plus six, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there is plus two. So that is a change of minus four. But I've got two of them, so minus eight. So I need eight electrons to get that to balance. Um, I'm going to have to make seven waters, because I've got seven oxygens there, which means I need 14 H pluses there. So just double check up on that, Roy. Yeah. Okay. Now, two electrons there, but I've got eight there. So I'm going to times that zinc by four. And then I'm going to add them together. So the overall equation plus 14H plus plus 4 zinc goes to 4 zinc 2 plus plus 2 chromium 2 plus plus 7H2O. And that's your overall equation. Radio, um, on to uh, almost there. A little bit more to go. What type of reaction is this going to be? I've got chromium with six waters reacting with ammonia. It's going to be a ligand substitution, isn't it? I've got a nice colour change as well. Suggest an equation for this. Well, I'm starting off with the water complex. Hexa amine, so it's going to be six ammonias. I'm going to add ammonia, of course, is neutral, so I don't change the charge, it's just a straightforward ligand substitution, like so. Oh, right, we give you, give you an um, interesting complex of chromium. Let me show you the structure of the ligand and uh, 
tell me that this acts as a bidentate ligand. What's meant by the term ligand? Um, it's uh, something that can donate an electron pair to metal iron. How is that able to act as a bidentate ligand? Um, well, it must donate two pairs of electrons to form two coordinate bonds from lone pairs on the oxygen atoms. Um, interestingly, it could actually donate from that nitrogen and that oxygen, or from those two oxygens. Um, so it could have, it's got a lone pair there, a lone pair there it could donate, or it could have a lone pair there and a lone pair there that it could donate. Uh, either way, it, it doesn't matter. Why does it exist as a mixture of stereoisomers? Notice it's a bidentate ligand, and I've got three bidentate ligands surrounding um, my chromium. So it's going to form optical isomers, like so. Now, tr try not to, if they let you simplify it, which they do here, uh, you can um, uh, quite easily just uh, do it like that. I'm just trying to think it is actually neutral over the water. Um, and then the next one is going to be like that. These are optical isomers. Okay, so there's a lot of information on um, this question. Uh, it's actually not too bad. The first thing they want me to do is calculate the empirical formula, which you've been able to do uh, for a long, long time now. Uh, maybe since GCC. So do your percentage masses, divide by your relative atomic mass, 14, 1, chromium is 52, oxygen is 16, that becomes 0 0.793, 3.17, 0 0.94, and 2.78, I think that is if I'm on handwriting is correct. You divide by the smallest one, that becomes 1, that's four, that's one, and that's 3.5. And then remember, you can't have a formula with 3.5 in it, can you? So you have to times everything by two to give you that. So your formula is N2H8Cr2O7. But hopefully, you recognize N2H8 is NH4 twice, or ammonium, if you remember. So it's ammonium chromate, like so. So it contains the NH4 plus iron and Cr2O7, two minus iron. It's got to have two minuses because you've got two ammoniums, each of which are a plus charge. Right, then wants me to identify substances B and C. For B, it's given me the molar mass of being 152. So you have to play around a little bit, but if you go there, okay, chromium's 52, yeah? So 0.52 minus 52 gives me 100. It also contains oxygen, because it's a green oxide of chromium. If you divide 100 by 16, uh, you get like 6.25. That's madness. Okay, so it can't be do can't be done. So let's take 152 and minus two chromiums from it. For that, you're looking now at 48. Divide 48 by 60, because the relative top mass of oxygen is 60, and you end up with it being three, which is far more reasonable. So let's say we've got two chromiums and three oxygens like so. So it's a bit of playing around. For that last bit, my gas. One decimeter cubed has a mass of 1.17 grams. You'll remember that any gas at room temperature and pressure occupies 24 decimeters cubed. 
So 24 decimals cubed, if you times that by 24, you end up with it being 28. So what gas could it be? Well, what do you reckon it's going to be? 28 out of all of that is going to be, of course, nitrogen gas, like so. And then finally, your equation, well, you start off with your ammonium dichromate, you know your oxide, you know your gas is nitrogen, what are you left over with? Well, you're left over with some hydrogen and some oxygen, so probably water as well. Um, and then you need to balance that, and to balance that you need four water molecules.